in John chapter 4, verse 35, Jesus says to his disciples, Do you not say that there are still four months and then the fields are ready? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes, look at the fields. Jesus is exhorting his disciples right here, and he's saying the fields are ripe for harvest now. And that exhortation echoes through the generations to us today. Followers of Jesus hear his call. Jesus says, lift up your eyes. The fields are ready. Look at the fields. And so Jesus issues forth the call of the kingdom. Now, it's very easy for us as individuals, and it's very easy for us as families, and especially as church families, to really lose focus. We need to remind ourselves again that our churches are not marinas by which people go out with their pleasure boats, but our churches, they are lifeboat stations that we go out from to give people the reason for peace and the reason for hope in amongst their hardship. Now, it's very easy to nod and agree with this message, but in actual practical terms, we fell drastically, dreadfully in this way. John Murray observed on one occasion, he said, the passion for missions is quenched when we lose sight of the grandeur of the gospel. And that is so true. If we would just kind of look at those glorious verses once again, just maybe even for the very first time, John 3, 16 and 17, where Jesus will say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And then Jesus says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save, to save the world through him. You know, in our church, we have Bible study week in and week out, and that's good and that's great. But whenever you have a lot of Bible study and whenever you have a lot of Orthodox teaching, but no focus on evangelism, well, alarm bells should be going off in our hearts and in our minds. In other words, if we're content with a right relationship, um, right understanding of the gospel, but it doesn't produce within us a deep desire to communicate that gospel, well, then there is reason to be alarmed in our hearts and in our minds. I mean, there have been great men that have gone before us, Paul and Peter and John. They've gone before us, and by the Holy Spirit, they've given us this foundation by which we stand upon, and we raise their work theologically as the Word of God, and it is for sure. But at the same time, if we do not engage in the winning of souls like they did, then we've actually distorted the story. We've distorted the story, and some of us are in this place of paralysis, paralyzed, and the devil looks in, and he is celebrating the fact that we are not communicating the gospel, that we have grown content with our grand theological positions, which are good, which are good, but we're not being Jesus's ambassadors. And it's simple, it's straightforward, it's profound. Paul will say in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, he'll say, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to Christ. What are we supposed to be doing every day? We're supposed to be ambassadors for Christ, saying to people, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled, be reconciled to God. This is the most important message that this world has ever known, that it's ever been given to this world, and that he provided through the cross at Calvary, through Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, and it dealt with all of your sin. It dealt with all of your emptiness. It dealt with all of your alienation from God, and we as God's ambassadors need to be communicating that gospel to this lonely, dark world.